Okay, here we are. Welcome back to the boat shop. This is going to be my first effort at a video since uh, since Jackson Brown went on to that massive boat shop in the sky. I don't mean to make light of that. I uh, right now I'm choosing to believe that all dogs go to heaven, and we're gonna. We're gonna hang out again. Uh, he was so looking forward to finishing this boat and I kind of got behind and got really busy and he got pretty busted up and we just didn't get it finished. So uh, with your permission, you and I will finish it together in his honor. Mounting the cow, here's the deal. I don't even know if I'm thinking right. You know what I mean? This is my first effort back out in the shop here. And uh, so what I do here may be garbage. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, we're gonna do some things here. We're gonna mount this. I've already shot uh, something with my phone. I'll put it either before or after what I'm saying to you right now. I'll probably put it in right now on how to do this. Okay, so I was just shutting down the shop and gonna go in when it kind of dawned on me that maybe I should even show you um, basic little things like this. Uh, certainly mounting the cowling is something you're going to want to know about and I have a pretty specific way we're going to do that. I am going to show you the actual attachment method that's going to be magnets and so on back here. Uh, but in the front we're going to have a pin and I need something to pin it into and what you're seeing there is my sharpie marks on the cowling and some white stuff oozing out because that's thickened epoxy. You can kind of see how much I have placed on the forward portion there. The cowling does not come cut like this. You're going to build your own forward section. I'll show you more of this once the cowling is off and we talk a little bit more about how this is going to mount. When I lay up the cowlings, this flat area comes all the way forward to where the bull nose attaches to the, uh, to the deck here. Um, as we talked about earlier in an earlier video, We've extended this about two inches, and so all you need to do is cut this back. Uh, it's very, very simple. You will see, and I will show you more. Uh, that thickened epoxy there is West Systems epoxy. I use it in little jars like this, and my scale to measure it out. Or you can just use the whole, the whole pump setup here. I should have just pumped it because I wound up mixing up about as much as I would have if I'd done a full pump anyway. This is the one and only place I ever use this stuff, which is, where's the description of it? Perhaps on the lid. Glass microspheres. Doesn't that sound high tech? What that means is really, really weak. <laughs> These are microspheres. They're little glass balls, believe it or not. So this is air. Uh, meaning it's very, very lightweight compared to other fillers. And so I have mixed up a whole bunch of that stuff in my epoxy until it's very thick so I don't have to worry about it running all over the place. And then I shoved a whole bunch of it in the end of the cowling. I applied radio box tape to the wood so that the epoxy won't stick to the wood and then slap that baby on there. So now I'm gonna have this nicely formed batch of epoxy there. This little piece of wood you see here has a whole bunch of radio box tape on it as well. Oh yeah, it'll be kind of stuck a little bit, but it'll be permanently attached inside the cowling and these will just pop off. You can grab it and give it a little tug. There'll be a little touch up shaping we're gonna do here. You can see it's oozed out a little bit here. I probably didn't mix it quite as thick as I should. But I kind of wanted it to do that so that it would, so that this big wad I stuck under here would at least kind of ooze down and have a decent surface, decently matched surface to the radius here. So I don't know if any of that just made sense. I shot this on the fly. As I say, it's getting darker out there. And speaking of fly, I'm getting ripped to shreds by the skeeters. So I'm doing this all for you. I'm in pain. I'm itching already. Microspheres, mix it, mix it up thick, jam it in the front of the cowl, slap radio box tape everywhere, slap the cowling on, weight it down nice and tight. We want this thing to sit really nice and snug here. I will now show you 
how we put that pin in there. There's a mosquito right there attacking my camera hand. I gotta go. More soon. Later, bye. Okay, it's officially the next day. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know if you are. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. We're all set up. That actually really inspires me. This stuff usually, it seems like when you fill it with a bunch of these uh, little bubbles here that it's remains really kind of soft. This feels very hard, which is good. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's get my high-tech weight system removed here. Okay, mm-hmm. Now, I'm gonna lift this up and see if it pops free. And... It... Isn't that pretty? Pops right off. We've now successfully filled this whole end. We have a beautiful little radius there. Get stuff out of the way. And look at that. We'll clean that up a little bit. And we're going to drill this for a pin. I'll show you how. Hang tight. Okay, welcome back. That's how you do this part. Uh, and so here we have this puck of this really cool ultra lightweight epoxy that's pretty stout and gives a little strength to the nose for when we pound the ult the, <laughs> the buoy that we surely will pound and hopefully that's all we ever hit with the front of the boat. And so we have our puck here and we're going to run a pin through it. This area will get cut out. I'll show you how we build a couple little platforms here and we set a couple of magnets. We set a couple of matching magnets on a little bit of structure that we'll add here. And when you bring this cowling on, it's gonna rip right out of your hands and slap perfectly into place. So when you're in a hurry, boy, you put this thing on her, bam, it jumps on there all on its own, and away you go. Uh, you just noticed this here. Yes, you recall we moved the bullnose forward, inch and a half. So the cowling, which was designed for a shorter center section, is an inch and a half short here at the tail end. It's just as well. I, I kind of recommend if you get one of these from me, this is what you'll get. And I and I, although I put a little bit of carbon in here, this tends to break right here. If you blow over and, and happen to go in backwards or, or other bad sorts of things happen and, and this hydros at all, because the magnets hold it really well here, you can see what'll happen. This'll break here. Uh, if it was longer, it'd be even worse. A false deck similar to what I do, or precisely as I do in the Stro, is really the way to go. Let it blast off of there. If it wants, it won't break anything. And that has definitely happened on the Stro. Let me check. Yep, doggone it. <sighs> okay, anyway, this is how it'll come. Uh, so what we're going to do up here, on the Stro, the cowling extends far enough forward as with most capsule boats, you know, they, they stick pretty well forward of the bull nose. And so you, when you build your lower section, it can literally hook underneath your bull nose. And it's a really super duper dandy way to have the front of the cowling hold. This boat on the Eliminator, it just barely sticks forward as you can see right here. And I don't even do anything fancy with it when I, when I make the mold, it just ends there. And then you fill it and flatten it off. You can put more of a goober of epoxy here if you want and turn this into a little rounded thing, whatever. Uh, and so what, we, what I'm getting at is there isn't a whole lot here to put a pin through. What I want is a pin sticking forward and a matching hole here. And we pin the front on and then let this thing slap down, right? We ain't got much room, but we're gonna do it anyway because because, 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 because. We're gonna do it right here. Because this is the only good heavy structure I have. And uh, we'll see if it works. What we'll use for our pin, you can use almost anything. A piece of aluminum, uh, nylon screw. I use stainless. This is the tubing that I use to make, actually that one's not, this is the tubing that I use to make my uh, fuel tubing. Yeah, I know, it's a little heavier than the, than the brass stuff, but I don't know if you've ever noticed, but and what is it, brass or copper? I don't know what the mixture is, but that 
that brownish, soft, yellowy brass. It's brass, right? Tubing that they give you with fuel tanks, it uh, nitro eventually causes it to get brittle and it can break. I bend my own stainless tubing. This is 165 OD. The idea ID is I don't know, uh, but it is 15 thousandths wall. So subtract 30 thousandths from 165. This is 135 interior ID. How about that? I never knew that before. Anyway, 15 thousandths wall. At one point in time, I thought 10 thousandths wall would be better. That's what this is. Easier to bend. I made my own little dies because I do really, really sharp radiuses with it. The 10, even though I made nice little dies and I try really, really hard, it tends to collapse. The 15 seems to hold. I don't, I'm not sure why I'm telling you all that. You could use 10 or you could use 15. Whatever you want to use for the pin doesn't matter, right? We're going to put a little pin. It's going to insert into that bull nose. The cowling will slip on over it and slap down into place. That's the theory. This, I think, is like 159. 160 it's where we're going to start and then we'll see if i can shove it together and one of the best things to do when you're not thinking straight is to just do it i'm going to do some drilling and some fitting we'll do some cutting i'll show you how to build the pieces i'll show you how to mount the magnets i might do some fast forwarding Make comments, stop me if there's other things you need to see. Uh, I think I get a little bit repetitive and so that's why you see some fast forwarding and zipping through things. I, I mean, how long can you watch me stir epoxy, right? I actually stir it for a very long time. I fast forward a very small section of the time and that's all you ever see when I'm doing epoxy anymore. I'm gonna start this pretty straight just so I can get it started. And then I'm gonna come at that angle that I'm shooting for which is something like this. Oh, that did not go well. Let me hold it a little more firmly in place. Yeah, I see why now. I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, when the flutes hit the, hit the wood, it's trying to jump for the same reason that I started this straight. It wants to jump and walk across the wood when I'm trying to go in here. So we'll have to kind of work with this a little bit gently until I can feel it start just like that. Oof, there's not much wood there. I routered out that interior, you know. I know there's a big hole there. You, you, we're going to fill it. It'll be fine. Ah, see, that's a pretty good spot. I think I'm reasonably pleased with that. Let's see if the tubing will fit. Or if we do need to go to the bigger drill. Either end kind of done. Eh, it's tapered, kind of, sort of, not really. There's a good chance I could force it. We'll epoxy it in there anyway, so we might as well go to the next size up, which I should have used in the first place. Now you know. Just go ahead and use the 165. Otherwise known as a numbered 19 step drill, I have just discovered. Because now it's going to be hard to find this same angle, right? This is a great example of the type of stupid stuff you'll do when you are not thinking straight. Oh, it found itself right away, so that's good. Yeah, we'll have to go a little bit oversized in this just to make sure that it uh, is reasonably easy to line up. Let's uh, let's hack a piece of this on. Well, should we use the tin? No, nah, I'm going to keep that for water outlets. Let's create a more friendly entry. up just that quick there we go let's see Would there be any benefit to running it way down and gluing it all the way down no 
We're going to send it through a little ways like that. Do I have anything in here to write with? Oh, yeah, there's a couple. <laughs> Let me check. Ah, dang it. Oh, he's my boy. I'm going to leave it too long. And we'll mark it out here. <clears throat> and cut it out there as well. Hear him running. Got some engine parts going on. Got some turbos going. Yep, yeah, I'm back at it. I'm back at it. Reluctantly. Okay. I see it. You know what? That's hot. So many of you have commented, by the way. Thank you for that. It means a lot to me to know that Jackson meant a lot to a lot of people. Don't tell Jackson, right? He doesn't mind, really, seriously. How do I know he told me? What'd you think? Okay, so that'll be like Che. This I should probably just oversize right now. I wonder if I just, boy, I don't, I'm afraid to put even a little taper on that. Look at that. We, I mean, we're really not grabbing much material, but I don't want it to be a complete nightmare to find the spot, but there it is. I mean, when you're in a hurry and that clock's counting down, we got till 30 seconds. Starts at three minutes, but I usually don't fire my boat till like 2.30. No sense sitting out there driving around in circles waiting for something bad to happen, right? So, uh, you know, the boat doesn't fire, you gotta fix something really quick. And you gotta slap this on in the biggest, the world's biggest hurry. You don't wanna fight too much to find the spot. That's pretty easy though. I can feel it. I can get there pretty quick. I might put a little taper on here. I'll think about it. Okay, so that's how we're gonna mount the front of it. Back here, let's get rid of this stuff. I don't remember what I was doing. Oh yeah, I put it in there because I was thinking about maybe leaving this in. I put it in there a long time ago. All right, here we go. Let's get this out of the way. Anybody know where to get these anymore? I, I was thinking they were a K and B part and I've been trying to find it can't find them I just like the little smooth angles and stuff and they're, they're the right thread for the CMB head I don't remember what thread that is I've had those laying around forever okay all right we're gonna hack this out of here yeah we, we could have done this while we were building the boat but what, what I'm trying to do is it, by way of helping y'alls, because as I've told you many times, that's what I do. Uh, I'm trying to show you what you can do if you have built an ML Boatworks kit, because most people just put it together the way they get it, and then they say, now what? How do I mount the cowling? Well, here's how. Cut this out. We'll go and take this one out right now, too. Flex? No. Doesn't need to be there. Oh, I said I was going to take this one out. We'll sand these up and pretty them up a little bit later.
Maybe. One of the things I like about using uh, this heavy eighth inch ply is it has these multiple layers and they're different colors. You go from white to brown, then a couple of whites, then back to brown. So it kind of gives you an idea of how you're doing. Here's the deal. Oh, where's my short one? Here we go. Right? Get the idea? No, not like that. I'm going to turn it over, you see, and, and then push it in. And then this will be flush. How come? Because once those are flush, this will get epoxied to this right here. Then we'll mount our magnets. That's going to attach our cowl, okay? Got it? Good. Get to work. 440s. The barrel, the barrel, the, uh, this, the sticky outy part, it's too long to pull this off. Um, here's, here's some that are not cut. And look at that, it doesn't even have teeth on it. That's a weird one. Uh, it's a great one to use for an example. See how long the barrel is here. It pretty much goes all the way through right now, which is really great for eighth inch ply if you don't care about what's on the back side. But I want this to fit down flat on the epoxy of, on the fiberglass of the cowling. And so we need to recess it. And so to do that, here's your fixture. Little lock nut. I just thread that on there like that, walk over to the grinder and give it a quick zippity doo dah. See, that'll take that end down. Don't know if you can see it. Take it down to the end of the bolt. Of course, then there's one thing, another thing you gotta think about now, this is, uh, here we have our 440 uh, blind nuts uh, stuck in the back there, and we epoxy this down on here. We think that's great and then we stick our magnet on and we grab a screw and we run it in there and it goes in so far that it jams right through the fiberglass here. Now yeah you, want, you don't want to do that. So you got to be careful. You got to play with some different length screws until you figure out what's going to work. This little guy right here, if I can get it to go through the hole. Can you see that? It's just barely thinking about coming through. Right? In fact maybe it is ever so slightly. But by the time I put these on, and then I put epoxy, and then I seal this, I'm, I'm effectively making this thicker. And so we'll be in good shape. I don't have to worry about that hitting bottom. I may have to go in here. And, well, in fact, what I'll do when I push, I was gonna say to clean the threads out, but uh, that'll really be kind of sort of impossible. When I epoxy this on, what I'll do is just be really careful not to get a whole bunch around those holes so it doesn't push into the, uh, into the threads, you know what I mean? I think I can pull it off. I don't know, we'll see. I don't think it goes that way. Yeah. Okay, get after it. Just find a, find some sort of a pan head that's the same size as these guys. Away you go. I know, it's weird, it's crazy, it's overkill, there's better ways. Do it your way. I'm doing it mine. Okay, isn't that pretty? Nice and flush. Oh, I could tell you wanted to know, so it's uh, 440 by, by one quarter.
little bitty short guys. You might want to get you some 3 8 too because you'll be surprised no matter how good a job you do with this, you'll get done and you'll find out it's too tight or something and you actually have to put a shim behind a magnet or something uh, and you'll need a little bit longer screws. So get a couple of them. I've got, oh, I think I've got quarter, 3 8 and halves. They're cheap. And I guess there's not like a part number or anything, so that's it. 100 of them, that should be enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> That'll get the job done. Okay, you ready? Yeehaw! Mm-hmm. Remember this piece that was across here? We cut it out. This is what we're going to do. All right. So we're going to figure out this height here where I want this to be level with our our recess, you know, where our cowling pops down in there, right? So what we're gonna be measuring for is the height of that bottom magnet. That's where we're gonna cut a slot in here, eighth inch wide, and we'll make another little piece of this uh, super cool eighth ply. This one you won't have to recess, of course, and it'll sit all the way back in right here. I know, it doesn't make sense. You'll see. I'll, I'll make one or two, and then I'll show you how we attach it all and make it all work awesome. Okay, I'll be back in just a minute. Man, you guys are slave drivers. I swear I can almost hear you yelling through the GoPro that you want to see how to do this. So here we go. Oh, well, that's my mark. See, I, would, I stacked the, the two together, and it's... Look at that, it's picking up everything in its sight. And then just marked underneath the lower one. You know, know what I mean? Come on, it's not that hard. This is actually gonna be a little bit of an angle because you can see this is a slight angle here. We're just gonna kind of sort of try to match it, which isn't much. Straight in. More or less double the width of this. Got a piece here. And look at that. Huh. I guess I'm done. <laughs> it, it was actually supposed to be a little bit more difficult than that so I could show you what to do. But see, we're not all, all the way in there yet. I could have kept going. You know what I mean? Even if you score this material here, that's perfectly fine. In fact, I've already sealed this once, um, and so we're going to have to score the material because I want bare wood, not sealed wood, for the epoxy to grab hold of. But a nice way to, to get all the way to the bottom is use a file that's roughly eighth inch or slightly less. It has good teeth on the end. You ever notice a, a good file has no teeth on one side and teeth on the other? Not, not side, um, end or whatever you want to call it. You know, because if you're working in the bottom of a slot and you only want to take it up or down and not deeper, well, this is really handy. Uh, at this particular moment, we want to gouge the back, the bottom of our slot, hole, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's going to be really difficult to do with the handle on there. So we're going to just kind of set her in there and work it a little bit. It's a little bit easier for me now to see the angle here as well. Pushing all the way in and I'm working the top of the slot, the bottom of the slot a little bit. And you can see I'm roughing up the wood here, which is good. It's good to get roughed up once in a while. All the way in, doesn't rock now, hits the back. Okay, so now we're gonna build a platform here. It needs to be this far out, right? Because it, it, it's the same thing as this, only it's gonna be slightly longer because it obviously it has to go all the way up underneath here. And, get, and land the magnet in the correct position. So it's gonna be a little bit of far, farting around to get it in the right spot. Um, one thing you can do when you build the piece, just overbuild it, make it a little bit too long. Uh, width of it should be as much material as you can grab, okay? So whatever your shape is here, I'm gonna measure end to end because you might as well make it as stable as you can. But by the time you've glued it to where it's sitting against the back and it's captured here, it'll be really, really stout. Okay, but we're gonna just make sure it's as good as we can. Um, so build it too long, okay? Before you make your holes or marks or anything, 
and then you can take this guy and just lay it on it. Pull these screws out like one at a time, poke down through there and mark it, and that'll zero your magnet right up underneath the other one. Okay, did that make any sense at all? Um, I think that should work. Uh, this thing at roughly five inches, I think it's slightly over five. Let's see if I can figure out what I did with the, uh, here we go. Eh, mine's five and a sixteenth. Uh, what you're shooting for, and it depends upon how much you carve this thing out when you cut it. You just, you know, it's got to clear, obviously, otherwise, because you don't want to hit it on the way in. So, whatever size you make it, just kind of make it reasonably centered. Pull one screw out, mark your holes, like I was just telling you, okay? And then we'll stick them, we'll glue that piece in. We'll be poking these same holes down through that eighth inch piece so that you can put your 440 blind nuts on the back side. But you don't need to recess them like this, obviously. They can stick down there, no big deal. We're gonna glue them in place and everything because we don't want them falling out if a screw falls out and that sort of thing. Uh, okay, all right, I'm gonna show you more here after a bit, so don't, don't panic, just start cutting, you'll be fine. If you cut too much, you epoxy it back up. No problem, isn't that awesome? Okay, how'd you guys do? This is how mine look. They're not finished, you know, because they're ugly. Um, that's where the magnets will mount. This guy will be in here like Che. What I'll do now is I'll take this over to the to the belt sander and, you know, sand it at an angle like that. Try to make it look like I did it on purpose, you know, <laughs> around the edges a little bit. One thing that you'll see is see how the magnet is crooked on this piece? Okay, that's the sign of a good boat builder right there, if all your stuff winds up crooked. I don't know, it's something about mounting these magnets. I can never get them straight, so I've just learned to get over it. Okay, I'm not over it, but I've learned to live with it. All right, so you've got your slots cut, you've got your lower pieces made, and now you're gonna glue these in first. And so you're gonna stick a bunch of glue on it, put it in like that, and hope for the best, right? No, look at that. I mean, that's not gonna work. Here's what you're gonna do. This one's on. You're going to mix up a bunch of epoxy and slap it in here, slap it around here. Then you're going to thicken some, okay? I've shown you how to thicken the epoxy. Put a little bit in here, back all the way against there and in this slot. Put this one in. You're going to do the same thing on this side. And then this one's ready to go in. And this baby will slap itself into place. And it'll hold it at the right distance and in the correct alignment. Okay, and that's it. And you're gonna walk away now and let the epoxy set under here. Ah, first thing you ought to do, um, hopefully you have some of these little pointy picks that have this nice little radius and a little bitty end here. One's gonna fall and that's bothering me. There we go. Uh, if you don't have them, uh, go down and expand out the description that I have to my video. Uh, it's below the name of the video there. You can click a little button that says more. I've got a bunch of links there and stuff where you can it'll take you directly to a link where you can get some of these they're really handy look at that cute little fillet there cute little uh radius that you can make a fillet so you're going to go in here now and and do exactly that make some fillets up above and below you can't see it right and you can't see it under here hopefully you've got some kind of magnet in magnet some kind of mirror any old mirror where you can look up underneath there make sure there's plenty of epoxy try to make some sort of halfway decent fillet around there because as you can imagine, this, you know, we're dangling this piece out here in the wind. Um, and, uh, you know, it's captured and it's going to be epoxied well enough. But the better job you can do gluing that thing in, the better off you're going to be. You just don't ever have to worry about it breaking. But, man, it's ugly. Make sure that you radius it or, or shape these things in some way that makes it look somewhat acceptable. And <laughs> slap it together. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, and, and again, I mean, I'm serious. Walk away, be cool, don't do nothing. You know, you're gonna use uh, G-Flex on this. You could use West Systems here too uh, for the epoxy. That's in the link too, both of those, um, to glue that guy into place. Now, before you glue it though, make sure that you're checking the height. There's, there's my straight edge. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but uh, see, I'm slightly below the level of this this inset portion here uh, which is good and that's fine level or below 
this one I think, no, no, it's good. It, it moves, it swings. So we're gonna lay something on there when I'm when I have this glue, and I think I'll, you know, get a, cut another piece of, like maybe hack this guy into size where it'll sit down in this slot, and just sit it on here and put a weight on it, yeah, just to keep them properly aligned. Walk away clean now. Tomorrow, tomorrow, a long time from now, when we're really really confident the glue is set, you'll be able to remove this upper piece. Next thing you're going to do is mark the location using your trusty sharpie that is nearby. Okay, I can see where that thing fits there. I want to go all the way out here and see where this one is. Uh, we're going to draw the line right around there. That's the no epoxy zone. Okay, now I know where I need to get up underneath here and scuff the heck out of this. Right, you're gonna take some 60 grit or 80 grit and you're gonna scuff it until it all looks white. You know, fiberglass nice and shiny when it's been laid up. You're gonna sand it until this all looks white. Whatever you gotta do to make that happen. Then, I'll show you. And we'll do it together. Glue these in, I'll come back, I'll show you how we're gonna attach this, okay. All right, you probably already figured it out. So you go do it and make your own stinking video. <laughs> then I can quit and just drink coffee and sit on the porch. In fact, I'm gonna go do that now. Yeah, I'll glue this in later. But I'll shoot more video and then we'll talk through mounting the rest of it. You're gonna love it. Okay, and there we go. I don't know if you have one of these. You'll need that to help hold the, uh, the clamp. Uh, so I so it's glued up underneath there. This is just those lower tabs now. That's all we're doing right now. Uh, and then I have a piece bridged across that sits inside these channels. Okay, this is how we're getting the height of the upper piece correct, and then clamped up to that bridge piece to hold. You know, pull them up where they ought to be. I don't know if it makes any sense at all. There you go. Um, is this going to work? Look at that. Okay, so you kind of see it under there. Hopefully you can see that I went underneath there and, and uh, kind of wiped off all the excess epoxy and have her sitting beautifully up into place. And now just walk away, you know, go do something else. Uh, take your dogs out for a walk. All but one. Come back tomorrow and pop it. Okay? All right. I'll show you soon. Okay. I think I have everything ready. Let's finish up this cowl mounting video. So we're going to attach the blind nuts to this. We're going to put this on here. We're going to glue this to this. And we're done. Sounds easy. Uh, when you're doing this on your boat, be very careful to give yourself a way to remove the cowling after the glue has dried. If you, uh, let, for this one for example, we're gonna glue this thing in place onto this, this strut here with the magnets in place. Now, after the glue is dried, you gotta remove this thing, right? If I pull up here, it's gonna break here because these magnets really, really, really hold. If I grab here and pull really, really hard, sure, it's going to pop free. Odds are I'm going to break this pin out up here or break the front of the cowling. So you need a quick way, a, a handy way. That's a long way of telling you that this is how we accomplish that on the eliminator. I haven't opened this one up yet, but it, this is awesome for a couple of reasons. Number one is it gives us a place to pop the cowling. I'll show how we do that. Plus, it gives us air for the motor. The way I build my stuff, I try to make everything fit really nice and tight, and the motor will starve to death if we don't have some holes somewhere. So you're putting holes here, you're putting holes here, there's gonna be holes here, and best of all, there are holes here. The original boat, this was cut out completely. We probably won't go all the way. I don't wanna grab a wash off of the deck, but we're gonna make as large as holes here as we dare. 
okay? But this is how this part works. And you'll see this better later after I glue it. I'm just telling you that now so you don't jump ahead and do this. Okay, so this is slapped on and it's glued down and I'm ready to release it. One finger goes in here, one goes against the deck, and you just kind of push. And this helps you pop just a really light little pop and then slide it forward and remove it, okay? So that is a must. Uh, you just saw me slide it forward because of the style of pin I'm using on this one. Um, not necessarily the best choice. Uh, I did it under duress, but here we are and we're going to use it. You could make a permanent pin on the cowling that inserts into a receiver here in the boat. So it went on this way and then down. That is actually better than what I'm doing, uh, but you decide. I'll show you why. Maybe I can give you an example. Yeah. For you that are racing, okay, this is mainly for you. If you're just going out and you're farting around, that's one thing. But you got to avoid, uh, in RC Unlimiteds, if you lose parts on the race course, you get last place points. Doesn't matter if you win, you get last place points. Uh, reason being is there's the potential. I don't even know if this truly happened, but the word is, that's been a rule for us for a very, very long time. Apparently, guys used to use like breakaway wings and stuff, so you'd launch the boat and the wings would fall right off. And guess what? The boat goes faster because there's nothing hanging up in the air. And so they came up with a rule to avoid breakaway parts, you know, so you're not deliberately having, you know, a pound and a half worth of stuff fly off of your boat and all of a sudden the boat accelerates, you know. Um, and because you know you don't want stuff floating on the pond then the next guy runs over it and you ruin your prop uh, like I did in the last race which was a heartbreaker um, yeah yeah I did run over a boat's debris but it, I mean he crashed right in front of me in the first turn and over the top I went and uh, uh, damaged my prop kicked my rudder up I was out of the heat that was the first heat of the day of course by the way I made a reasonable comeback with my with my second place prop, <laughs> first loser. You know, if there weren't guys named Brant and Moppin in the world, I would, I would have a lot of wins and everybody would be talking about me instead of talking about those guys. Uh, where was it? We were talking, I'm holding a magnet for a reason because I'm talking, oh, okay, racing. You absolutely don't want parts to fall off of the boat. The weird thing about magnets, first of all, they stick like crazy. And when I go to release this magnet, as I've already told you, it's extremely hard to get it to pop. However, they're really easy to slide free. Isn't that something? Magicians have been earning their fortunes by magnets for many, many decades. Is that bothering you the way it is me where I have extra skin sticking out and I've got ripped up knuckles? So when you're, when you're racing and crazy things are happening and it's lap four and the water is just chopped like crazy and the boat is bucking and snorting, this thing can easily slide free and fall off. Two things are going to happen. One, you're going to get last place points. Two, the next guy's going to run over this and destroy your cowling. You have to avoid that. Because I'm racing, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make sure that the boat Make sure that magnet doesn't grab anything. Make sure that I don't wash out the motor. It, it's a it, wash out. That, that uh, if I have to go through someone's rooster tail and just from the, the general violence, uh, water will come up underneath here and this will not fit this well later in life. Things just move. Fiberglass moves, wood moves. Uh, I tape it. I use radio box tape before every heat while this is sitting ready to go on the boat after I start it, I place radio box tape here and here, just this forward section here, hanging off the edge, you know what I mean? Like, like Che. And that does a couple things for me. One, when I slap this down, I'll just push that really quick and that holds on. That'll keep water from getting in there easily. Again, it can get in there from here. That's gonna be behind the carburetor and hopefully avoid trouble. Uh, so that keeps water from getting in there easily and it keeps the cowl from sliding forward So I'm not creating any fancy means by which to hold this in place on This boat a thing I have done in the past which I really really like Is you could make and this looks really really cool. You could make this piece slightly longer here and Then I just run a nylon screw in there sticking down So that so that it would hit you know what I mean? It'll it'll catch right here and keep it from 
slipping forward. Then if it breaks, you just spin it out and spin a new one in and go again, okay? Uh, however, again, I, I don't need it on here, and I'm not sure why I told you all that. Oh, yeah, well, just so that you wouldn't build it like this, and the first first time you run it, it, it shifts, and the magnets slide free, and the cowling gets run over, and you say, that Scott guy had a lousy idea with those magnets. No, you do got to make a way for it not to slide. If you have a go-forward pin, it's not going anywhere. Okay? Something to consider. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. All right, let's put this on. I've already scuffed the heck out of this. I tried to get everything ready, you know, so you're not having to wait for me to scramble around and find all the parts and stuff like usual. Let's go. Oh, cowling. Yeah, I know. Some of you guys are waiting for your cowlings. Well, I, I actually only know two of you that have actually built the boat far enough to where you need your cowlings. I'm going to do them. I'm in the mood to do them. Well, I'm not really, but I, but I mean, I've been gearing myself up to do the cowlings. And uh, then, lo and behold, we've had a, uh, our last gasp heat wave. It's about 100 degrees right now, and it's early in the day. I woke up to very, very hot weather. It's going to be much, much worse. And after this week, it's supposed to cool off a lot, uh, thankfully. I wasn't ready. I don't know if I need this. I, just, I always get so much glue all over my table. So we're going to go ahead and seal the back side of this. I'm not going to do the front side because I don't want, I, I want to be able to deal with it and not have glue everywhere. Plus when I lay the magnets on, I don't want them gluing on. I will later, not right now. I think I will later. I'm still thinking about that also. But we're going to seal this back side. Normally I'd use West Systems to seal it, but we're using G-Flex to attach it. So we're just going to go for that right now. And we'll do this really quick here. Oh, and I hate sealing with, with fully thick epoxy. It does really bad things. The main bad thing that it does is it leaves, is it's heavy, you know, because you're laying a ton of epoxy on there and it's hard to spread it out thin. The worst thing that it does is that it doesn't really soak into the wood very well. It will a little bit and it's fine, it's sealed, but if you thin it, it'll, it'll soak way, way, way in and that's way more better. Oh, those lines. Th those lines are about the edge of uh, here and here, you know what I mean? So that I know where to apply the, the thickened epoxy. You'll see, I, again, I don't know why I'm doing so much narration here. I should be fast forwarding this part too, maybe I will. Okay, fine. Get the glue off of my fingers for a moment. Well, I'm gonna gonna get a lot more glue back on my fingers, so let's just keep going. All right, I'm gonna put these guys in. Oh, party foul! Why didn't you tell me? Okay, you see how that kind of tried to stick? That magnet is grabbing the, the metal bracing underneath the table. I can feel it, you can't see it. Okay, for no particular reason, I'm gonna wet out the cowling as well here. It's not like the epoxy can soak into that, but I, I like the thought of uh, the strongest possible epoxy, that is to say raw epoxy, not thickened, uh, being the, the main item that is laying upon your gluing surface. Really don't want to get out to the edge there or we will have successfully glued the cowling to the boat. Then you don't have to worry about the magnet sliding and releasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start it, glue it on, and then run it and then after the heat you can break it back off oops hope that doesn't glue it on okay just about like that now we thicken it a 
little more. Really can't have this stuff running away. It doesn't look like it would right now, but I'm just gonna make sure. I mean, it's so hot out that it, this will be really runny briefly. And then when it starts to set, it'll, it'll set off really, really quick. Yeah, I, I mean, that's ragged edge. I think it'll stay put. Let's try it. And we're going to live on the edge here. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Looks like a little bit of epoxy on those, uh, the end of those, those metal things that have thread, uh, bolts, yeah. Don't laugh. going to take quite a bit, you know, because the surface of that cowling is much less than flaw flawless. What I would normally do here is use uh, PVA. Why do they call it that, by the way? Somebody leave me a comment. Let me know why it's called PVA. Anyway, it's a product that um, I, I've shown it to you in some of the other videos that it's a release agent is what it is. It just coats, it coats apart lightly and then you can get epoxy all over it and then, uh, but it'll still pop free later. It's what a lot of guys use in their molds when you're, when you're making new parts and then uh, it helps the part pop out of the mold. I, I don't use it. I, I've found that if you, as long as you wax the mold up really good, the part will pop out just fine and you're not having to deal with spraying PVA. I don't know, maybe something like that. Let's, uh, I really kind of want to make sure that this rounded part, that it bites that really well, you know, because pulling up and down on this causes a certain amount of flex. If I can pull right up and down on this almost vertical surface, just make sure that that's attached real good. I, I think that's going to make me happy. Uh, trying to, more than anything, trying to avoid a lot of flex, which could cause this to, cause this to actually break free. You know, you know what I mean? Where this guy pops off. I'm going to lay some, I'm going to lay some epoxy all the way across there. We're going to do something really dangerous. Oh, I was talking about the PVA because I'm, I'm going to experiment here a little bit. You'll see. This is how we learn. I, I do this, I make all the mistakes, and then you can learn from them. Yeah, you see me going all the way across there. I know what you're thinking. It's gonna grab the end of those those little bolts. And you're, you're right. I don't know, let's go with that, see if it works. But here's what I'm thinking, see? I got your plumbing grease from East Hardware. By the way, okay, that's why this is in my box. I don't know, I'm a weirdo that way. I'm gonna put just a dab on each one of these. Again, I don't know if this is gonna work. But isn't that probably gonna keep the epoxy from grabbing the end of that little bolt? I don't know, I hope so. Let's find out. Let's see, where's the right hand? Yeah, right there. I'm gonna take a look underneath here a little bit and just make sure that the magnets are kind of squared up together. Cause that, that's the way they will most commonly wanna sit. Okay, they're real square. Okay, I've made a mistake. Oh, slide. Thank you. Thank you for that. You saw that epoxy hitting the side there. And, and you are right. And that is why... Oh, I'll bet those magnets got epoxy on them from that. No, they didn't. That was the reason I had the radio box tape here. Almost goofed that up. Cut you a piece. 
set it on here. For the obvious reasons. Where's the end? That's all you gotta do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see how that looks. I'm just gonna push this down into place and watch. Insufficient. Story of my life. I could see where it wasn't making good full contact right here. It bothered me more than anything. This one looks like it was probably hitting pretty well, but I'm just going to stand a rib up right in the middle there and let it flare its way out. And we'll come back later after we remove this and there'll be some pushed out there'll be some voids that sort of thing so we'll go in and we'll scuff it you know with a little ball grinder on the end of the dremel or something and, and scuff out some of those areas and then uh, fill them in really well why it's i mean this thing's not going to come off of here it, it's really not but it'll look better that's important. Come on, there you go. Oh, that's squishing. Okay, now you're gonna throw a bunch of weight on here. No, <laughs> you don't wanna push on here and create a bow. We're gonna let this thing sit where it naturally wants to sit. And we're going to do that by putting our weight right on this edge. The magnet's grabbing it, obviously. Trying to pull it in a little bit. Did you see it squish? You probably can't tell. I could see it squish. No sweat. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to push down just the edge. Okay, getting it down flush. It does distort the cowling slightly right there. So you're going to want to add a little something. Mine didn't care about it in the back. In the front, I could see that it didn't set down all the way. Now, I can tell that it's sitting down fully. Okay, back is down, front's down nice and tight. Look at that fit. We're gonna wind up having to take a little bit more of this material away here, because you can't have it like that. Once we seal it and paint it, it won't fit at all. But you get the idea. Right now, I want it fitting really, really well so that we get all of this positioned properly. Look at that. I can see a really good squish. I can see a really good squish over here. I have no idea if I'm permanently gluing the little uh, little screws in. Only time will tell. Worst case scenario, you can set a uh, a good a good soldering iron on the on the end of that uh, that little bolt. Heat it up really good, and then it'll spin right out because it'll loosen that epoxy up really nice for you. Turn these over so it doesn't run out and go everywhere. Get a little alcohol in a rag. Clean your hands up. Ooh, can't wait to pop it. That is tomorrow. All right, let's go ahead and do this thing. It is not tomorrow, it is later today. It's been, a, I think it got to 109 today outside, probably 120 plus here in the shop. It is smoking hot. So I think that's gonna be set pretty good. Um, don't forget, I mean, I've reminded you a couple times to check the level on your G-Flex just to see if you've been doing a good job mixing even amounts. It'll kind of help you uh, judge whether you need to do more or less of one or the other if you kind of watch it over time. I marked them initially and I've gone this far and they're still uh, nice and even so that makes me feel really, really good. I want to feel really good by having this thing pop properly so... Mm, mm, mm. First of all, we should check. Yeah, that's that's hard. Turns out epoxy sets really quick in 130 degree temperatures. <laughs> Oof. 
It's brutal. I got about 10 minutes before the skeeters come out too. Okay, there we are. According to theory, I'm gonna stick my finger in here and I'm gonna push and it's just gonna go pop. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We have successfully glued it on. Oh, it's probably stuck on the uh, on the tape. Let's, uh, oh, I got an idea. I planned it this way. I didn't, but this is gonna work out awesome. I think. Come on. Yeah, buddy. Huh. Let's see if that helps. Starting to go. Okay. Bingo. Yeah, we were we were well glued onto the tape. I sure am glad we did that. Okay, let's look. Let's look. Pass judgment. Pass judgment. Looks good. Looks good. I can see right here where it was stuck on that tape. On that side that we were trying to pop. Okay. Which way did that go? This way. Now I know it's just it's just a piece of metal, but I, I kind of radius this end a little bit, try to help it go on. Okay. And now it's just going to push back in because we have successfully loosened up that hole. I'm going to hold it. Okay. Bam! That's pretty sexy right there. Gosh, those magnets really hold hard. I may have to lay a piece of G10 in there. I've done this in the past. Uh, glue a, a thin piece on to each magnet just so it doesn't slap all the way down. Because I'm telling you, woo! Of course, these are brand new. <laughs> Actually, I think I think that the number is seven percent over five years or something like that, and that you lose of, of strength. Golly, it just wants to tear it right out of my hand. I don't think that's coming off during the race to you. <laughs> All right, isn't that great? Okay, your cowling is ready to go. Now we're gonna pull these off, and we're gonna seal this, and kind of clean them up a little bit, and then we'll be ready to finish it. Hey, let's see if our uh, our little grease idea in here worked or if we're going to have to heat these up. Spins right out. That's one out of four. I should stop right there. Oh, no. It's nice and free. Oh, you just can't do it with that dumb magnet misbehaving unless you grab hold of it. Yep. Oh, man. I have just made you a big hero because all you have to do is put a little dab of this doggone plumber's grease on there and it comes right out. I think it's just a silicone grease, okay? So any old silicone grease that you can come up with uh, would work just fine. But I'm going to, this is going to be, there you go, Ace Waterproof Grease. This is going to be a staple in my building process from now on when I want to release stuff like that. Oh, I like it so much. I like it so much that I'm going to go in before the Skeeters take me apart and sit in the air conditioning and then we're going to finish our boat. <clears throat> Get her done.